is Russian O'Hare, who's founder and MD of Brand Elevation. Russian's going to speak about the customer experience, how to make your brand work both in store and online. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm delighted to be with you here today, and thank you very much for attending the Brand Elevation Masterclass. I'm going to start today with a video. Um, it's quite hard to fit a Brand Masterclass into 15 minutes, so let's try. Okay, so today I am going to talk about what is branding. I know Creative 3 have very kindly started on what is branding. I'm going to take it a wee step back because I think it's very important that everyone understands what a brand is. So a brand can be identified or differentiated by a name, a symbol, a shape and a colour and is often associated with a feeling, a taste, a season and location and these can have a positive or negative impact on the value of your product or service so I'm going to explain this in a little bit more detail so if someone says to you what is branding the first thing everyone thinks of is your logo your font your symbol your color basically your brand assets okay but branding is a lot lot more so everyone in this room here today is associated with a company which means you are all associated with a brand, okay? So if I say to you today, Marks and Spencers, I want you to think, is your perception of Marks and Spencers positive or negative? Everyone's answer will be different, and this is all depending on what your experience is with Marks and Spencers. So if you maybe went into Marks and Spencers and you love to browse around or you make friends there for a coffee and you have a very pleasant experience there, you love the staff, you love the friendliness, you love their clothes, you love their food, you're going to obviously have a very positive association with Marks and Spencers. However, if you had a staff member that maybe wasn't so nice or wasn't so friendly, um, didn't like the quality of their food or their uh, their clothes, then you could also have a very negative thought and association with that brand. This is an awful lot to do with what branding is, okay? About your tone of voice as to how you communicate throughout all channels to your consumers, okay? It's also very much about your story. Does your customers know your brand story? Because people love to connect with people, so therefore they love to know what is the story behind your business, or your product, and your service? So I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. I started in uh, sales, marketing, and branding 20 years ago. And I started my career in a blue chip company called Irish Distillers. It's a drinks company. You probably know more of the drinks if I mention the drinks more than the actual company. But um, I went from there and I spent some time getting to know the news media, which was very important in the industry at that time. Then I spent some time getting to know print media, 
before moving to a branding agency in Dublin seven years ago. Then I got married, then I had my first child, and dr driving two hours to work um, was no longer really appealing five days a week. So I decided to set up Brand Elevation five years ago. So we are a boutique agency. We are very proud to be a boutique agency. Um, we love that we are a very close knit team that contact each other all times of the day, morning, noon, and night, multiple times a day. Um, and we have a very close relationship with all of our customers, again, for the exact same way. We have two offices, one in Banbridge and one in Dublin. And we work with a wide range of customers. We work with small SMEs as well as large global brands throughout the, Ireland, the island of Ireland. I personally love the small to medium sized businesses because I can see the impact that our business has on their branding and their business very, very quickly. Within a number of months, you can see how you can turn around a business due to their branding and the impact of the different strategies and activations that we have installed. So we have four services to the business, brand strategy development, and this is where we get to know our clients, we get to know their brand, we get to know their business, and we align their business goals with their brand goals and constantly make sure that they are adhered to in order to get to their goals. We set out a brand book, and in that brand book, we basically have phases as into how they are going to reach their goal and in the time frame. Brand creation is where we look at them customers, and we can Sometimes have customers with a really strong branding and they basically don't need us to actually initially start at that stage. Um, or we could have the complete flip side of that where we have customers, especially after COVID, where they're coming out of COVID and their business has diversified quite a lot. And they need to, they don't no longer have a brand that represents their business as it stands today. And in that case, we will rebrand them. And a lot, then we go into brand activation, and that's basically where we put the strategy into place. That's where everything comes to life. That's where it gets from the paper into actions. And alongside that, we do all online presence. So that's where we design their website, do the paper click advertising, their social media, um, and just get them out there in front of clients. So um, I would like to find out uh, today, like how many people in this room is um, in retail? If you'd like to just raise your hand so that I can tailor my workshop here to, to the audience. So retail. And uh, what about professional services? Okay. And any trade services? Okay. Have I missed out any? Probably loads. Okay. So how can you improve your branding? And again, Creative 3 have already touched on this quite well. And what I would say is clear and consistent. It's so, so important over all channels of communication. It needs to be on brand. It needs to be clear. It needs to be consistent. I also want it to be a representation of your brand. I want it to connect to your audience. Who are your consumers? I want you to find out who are your consumers. I want you to put it in paper. I want you to... Put that, per put, put that profile in that person. Uh, is that person friendly? Is it more informative? Um, what way do you want your staff to act and have it on paper? And this is what your brand is, okay? Inviting, is it exciting, is it fun, or is it more conservative and informative? Engage with your customers. Find out what age group that they're in and target that age group. Find out where they are, what their problems are, and what problems they need you to solve so that you know how to solve it easily and in the best possible way. And therefore, whenever you do that, you have loyal customers. You have customers that want to repeat all the time, to connect with you, the routine, and you will keep them. So I'm going to now go through a few case studies because it is quite hard to explain what all we do in every, for every single customer because it very much depends on budgets and size and what it is their business and their brand goals are. So this first case study is a large international brand. They first started in Australia, they're in New Zealand. They came to Ireland about 12 years ago. I think we've been working with them for 10. They have rebranded now. This is their third time as their business has continuously changed along the way. And this company is called Hum. 
So this is a retail finance company, okay, and they do not have their own store. They work entirely in someone else's store, in a third party store. So the likes of the Harvey Normans and the Brown Thomases, um, Apple stores, for example, they have obviously they do finance within dentistry, lots of different industries. So our job is to get their message of their brand out in stores. Now I know you might look at this picture and you might say, "Wow, that w that wall graphic is very very obvious," and because they don't own this store. We can't ever be really obvious. We have to be always in the back foot. So we're working within somebody else's space and we can't take over it, but we also need to be there, okay? But that is actually not at eye level. That's way up high, okay? That's, you're only gonna see that as you're going up them escalators, really, okay? But as you walk around this store, you will see, and I have a wee sensor here to kind of help you, you'll see an end eye here, okay? You'll also see where we have very discreetly put different types and now this will change per store and who the client is you'll see like the plant pot you'll see see these wee small acrylic elvises and elvis is the bird which is their symbol okay we have them darted right round the store as well as aisle fins okay very discreetly here and the reason why we have done that we have different messaging on all types of pos as you walk around this store so as you walk around it and you're thinking i would love this or i would love that but i actually can't afford it this messaging is telling you there is a solution. The solution is we can get you finance. We can get you finance today. You can apply within this store. This is how you do it. And not only that, you can do it. You can select how you want to do it, whether it's five steps, three steps, 12 steps, 24, 36, whatever you can select. So that is the whole purpose of this very discreet but powerful branding that is within this store. We also make their branding seasonal. So we're constantly connecting with our audience. So for Christmas, for example, we will come up with an idea at the beginning of the year. So every one of our customers, uh, home customers, should I say, um, will have Christmas trees. So we might do um, Christmas baubles some year. Then maybe um, during the summer, we'll maybe want to be targeting the students that don't have a student loan. So we'll do different types of advertising to attract them. Valentine's, we'll have two Elvises, the two birds kissing. Halloween, we'll turn our Elvis into a scary monster. Whenever it's snowing, we turn them into a penguin. But we don't just go stop there. Uh, we also have radio campaigns, Guess the Hum. We also will have direct mail campaigns, so if you've already used the service but you haven't used it in six or 12 months, you will get a personalized direct to mail campaign. Now this is just one example um, of a bird and the, the reason why that's kind of cut like that is to kind of show you both sides of it, but it's only one bird you'll get. Um, and it'll be, we miss you, we want you back, why are you not back? So it's constantly engaging with you. Branded merchandise, again, depending on where the, who they're wanting to target and their in-store activations. This change is constant, but these are just ideas of what we do for them. We also do outdoor advertising that you'll see um, throughout Ireland. They could be cafe barriers where we were kind of taking the, the opportunity to whenever people were sat, sitting outside bars and restaurants there for a number of months. The next um, case study that I would like to introduce you to is Whirlpool. So basically anywhere you see the Whirlpool brand in Ireland, we are responsible for it. So whether that's you, again, another brand that is within a third party area they don't have their own store. They're in electrical shops throughout that Ireland. So whether that's clothing or whether that is an in-store activation and display where we have all their products, whether that's a kitchen, whether that's indoor um, tent cards, stickers, outdoor, um, and their pay-per-click advertising, we basically manage everything. And we have been working with this client now from the very beginning, about 10 years. They came to us looking for a sticker and we told them it wasn't a sticker they needed because who wants to buy an appliance and then have to go and start scraping off a sticker? So um, they had, actually, that's a good point. And that relationship has built to us basically managing their whole brand from start to finish. And last year was the first year that Whirlpool Ireland won best managed brand and sales in the whole of Euro, Europe. 
Our next case study is a smaller brand. Um, again, this is why I love smaller brands, because you can see the direct impact that you can have on that brand quite quickly. So this is a smaller brand, a local brand, um, that started in just outside Banbridge, is now in Scotland and throughout the UK. And they started as a joinery business, and they came to us at the beginning of the year to say that their brand no longer represents their business, as they have now developed their own factory where they make everything that they need themselves. Um, this, this brand did not cost very much. Um, there, we're currently doing their website, and I would say the whole lot has come under three or three thousand pounds. And the reason why I'm saying that is because everybody assumes that branding costs an awful lot, especially whenever you hear the word rebrand. It doesn't have to. It really doesn't. And that's why we're here to help you and guide you through. This is another um, customer that came to us in mid February of this year. They are only an online store. They had a fantastic sales experience throughout the whole of COVID. Everywhere, all the furniture shops were closed. So their sales just went through the roof. But as all the shops basically opened, their sales just continued to drop and drop and drop. So they came to us saying, how can you help us? What do we need to do? Their branding was, and I probably should have give you an example of their branding, but their branding was white, red, and black which in this industry is a real indication of a discount store. So it did not represent who they were. So the first stage was to rebrand them. We read on their website, they're doing pay-per-click advertising. And one of the things that they never done before was they never wrote blogs. They never told their customers why they needed a product. They never sent out any email uh, easings at all, even though they had a database of about 20,000 customers. They never communicated with them. There was nothing to draw them to their website. So um, that started, they first contacted us in mid-February. We had the rebrand done in March, and in April, their sales increased by 72%. So this is why I love smaller businesses. <laughs> You'll not see that, that turn around and with the likes of Whirlpool so quickly. So what is essential to make your brand work? I, know you can, I don't know why, but that looks as if it's all squashed. You can hardly read the, the writing on the left-hand side. Um, I, my advice is create a brand Bible or a brand book, as we call it. This is what, who your customer is, where your customer is, how you're going to do it and break it into phases, make it into very manageable chunks within time frames, and set budgets against each. Know who your target audience is, both online and offline. You need to be wherever they are. Establish your brand identity, your mission, and your statement, okay, and all your values. Have that all in your brand Bible. Make sure that your content is eye-catching. Make sure it's engaging, because Otherwise, people, there's just so much content now online that needs to stand out. Create an ambience, create a connection, because you want to not only just connect with them, you want to retain your customers. Have a personality. Create a free, will be the first ones that will be able to tell you have a personality. Um, because people want to see personalities, people want to see who's behind the business as much as what the business does. And make sure that your customers are aware of where you are, what events you are, what are you doing, what offers you have on, what incentives you have. And make sure that your brand is integrated into all aspects of your business. So what does your brand strategy look like? I'm ahead of time. Um, brand strategy is basically a wide variety of ch uh, channels, collateral methods. Okay? So you want to have your digital marketing. You want to have your incentives. You want to have your advertising and your events. And very importantly, you want to have your packaging right. This is one aspect that is actually often forgot about. So people's all social media, social media, website, website. But your packaging is really, really important. So if somebody is buying from you, they're buying, whether it's a gift to self or it's a gift to someone else, it's a gift to someone. Make that a special gift because that is what is connecting people to your brand. It's that feeling and that's connection. I don't know if I'm not pressing hard enough. Oh, I went too far. Sorry, Jessica. 
Thank you. Next one. That's you. So what is branding? Branding is a customer experience that you provide. It's a philosophy you embrace. And it's a culture that you inhere too. It's your, it's your staff as much as anything. If a brand has a feeling that a business invokes in them, and you want that to be very personable, you want it to be relatable, because that's what makes your business unique. So for example, in retail, you want to create an ambience. You want to have staff that wants to be constantly pulling the people back. You want to have a product that people need so that pulls them back. There's a lot, a number of factors in branding that you need to constantly be thinking of. In, for a trade service, for example, okay, you want to have a tradesman who has a personality. Yes, does a fantastic job, but someone that they can also relate to. Lastly, I want you to take away with you today is a very, very important statement, and it very simply dis explains what branding is, and that branding is branding is what people say about your business behind your back. Thank you very much. Um, I hope you have got something out of that. Um, we have a stall in, in the Miller Suite there, so by all means come and visit us. And if you have any questions, we'd be more than happy to help. And there's also branded bottles and pens and everything for you. <laughs> okay.